Working with views. You actually create and work with the plan's data in views. And some examples of views are going to be graphics, tables, tables with time scales, tables alone, charts, diagrams, and forms. Some views may be filtered, grouped, and sorted. Uh, others you would create on your own, create custom views. Project Cranes uh, contains dozens of views, and most people end up working with just a you know, few views that they become very comfortable with, sometimes a split view. And, and uh, typically, when you log into project and open a project, the default view you're going to see is called the Gantt with Timeline. Let me open up a project here. I'm going to open one of my test projects. We'll open this overview project. So there's the Gantt chart view. It's a very, very common way to represent the project schedule. We have the table along the left. The table is going to have the rows and columns of the project data. You see the columns here, duration, work, start, finish. And if I move my divider bar over, predecessor, resource names. And of course, I can add other columns as well. And uh, various rows. And all the rows just represent all the different tasks here from top to bottom. And then on the right of the divider bar, we have our Gantt chart. So this is one of the very useful views for entering and fine-tuning task details. Now, part of the Gantt chart, uh, this particular one anyway, and uh, it'll let me actually add a timeline to the top of it. And if I navigate to my view ribbon here in the split view group, we have a timeline checkbox. I'll check that. And when I do, it actually shows me a, a graphical representation of certain milestones, phases, stages of my project, whatever I want to put there, actually. You determine what's in your timeline view. And it's basically an easy way of seeing the big picture of the project plan. And so I can go ahead and change the formatting here. And when I click on it, it will display the format tab. And then there will be all sorts of options here. I can change the date range. I can make the bars taller or shorter if I want to. I can add more tasks here. Whatever I want to do, if I want to add another timeline bar, I can add one underneath it there. And I can add other items to the timeline there. Uh, so again, quite a bit of uh, options that I can do there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other views. And now we're going to switch back to the resource sheet. And the resource sheet is going to display us details about the resources in a row and column format called a table. One resource per row. And the resource sheet doesn't tell me anything about tasks. It really tells me all about the resources. In this particular case, I have the resource name the type of resource we got into different types we'll talk about in a subsequent topic work material and cost initials group max units standard rate overtime rate cost accrued base so all sorts of information there you can see i have a uh, named resources i have carol and i also have it looks like some uh, role-based resources generic resources team resources okay so i have a number of things here um yeah, you could also have material resources in the resource sheet as well now, some other views you might have is a uh, what's called a resource usage. And if I switch to that, we'll see a completely different perspective of the project. What this resource usage view does is it groups the information by resource, meaning I'll see the resource name, then all the tasks assigned to the resource. Okay, resource, task, resource, tasks, right? And then the right side is going to show a time phase view of, by default, the work. Right, so currently I don't see it, and that's because I really just have to bring it into focus. I could either use the scroll bars down here to bring it into focus, or what I could do is I could select the row. I'm gonna I'm selecting Robin here because Robin has a lot of work. I'm gonna select the row of organized manuscript for copy edit. And then on the task ribbon, click task ribbon, and then go all the way to the right. You'll notice in the editing group there's a scroll to task button. If I click that, it automatically scrolls into view the work. Or, or the what's taking place for that particular task. In this case, the work, you can see all the work. Right, so now I can scroll back and forth here if I want to. Or I could, if I chose to, I could zoom out. And I'm gonna have to zoom back in here. So now instead of seeing hourly uh, work, work by day, I'm seeing work by, it looks like a, a larger increment every five days. So I can go out to weeks here if I need to. You could actually go out to months if that makes sense. Whatever really makes sense and to view the project information for you. Now it's by month. That is an example of the resource usage. Um, another view that we have that's really, really helpful too would be a task usage. And it's just the kind of like the opposite of the resource usage. Whereas before information was grouped by resource, now it's grouped by task, right? So if I go down to the detail task, let's go to set pages, for instance, row 12. 
task name, and then the two resources assigned to it, and they each have 80 hours. Again, I don't see the work in the time phased view, but remember, we talked about that, right? Task ribbon, all the way to the right in the editing group, scroll to task, and there's the work right there. We'll switch back to the Gantt chart. We're still on set pages. The other option that you have is using what's called a, a split view, which brings up a form. And uh, what I can do here is go to my view ribbon and then in the split view section again, details checkbox, check that. And that will bring up my split view. And it's down at the bottom is my task form as you can see by the view label here and along the left task form. And what the task form has the benefit of is it shows us more of the underlying details for the task. For instance, set pages with that selected, I, mean, I can see the two resources assigned in the Gantt, but now I can actually see the two resources here in the form, the amount of units assigned to each, the cost of each resource, right? And the remaining cost of each resource, the task type, fixed units, and other information. Um, another thing about the task form is, you know, just as you have multiple views up top, to view the project information, you can change the view down here. For instance, if I right click on the gray area here, it brings up one of those pop-up menus we talked about earlier. Currently the cost view is selected. If I change that to work, maybe I want to focus on work. Switch that and now I can see same to resources, but now I can see the work per resource, 80 and 80. No work has been done, that's why there's no actual and that's why the remaining and the planned equal. Again, I can switch you know, maybe I want to see predecessors and successors for the task, right? Again, it's really up to you, you what you want to see. However, you do have a lot of flexibility here to look at the project in different manners. To close out of the view, the task form, I can either right click here and deselect that checkbox for show split, or you could just as easily deselect the checkbox in the split view grouping of the view ribbon. Okay, great. So let's move forward.